This story about love, betrayal, and the search for truth will make you stay on the edge of your emotions, making you think about the value of trust and devotion in a relationship. The main characters will face difficult decisions, but their story also paves the way for understanding and forgiveness. Immerse yourself in this fascinating story and embark on a journey through the complex waters of human relationships. The morning light and the singing of mountain pigeons woke me up early. I could hear rustling, most likely chipmunks, running around the campsite, trying to remove the remnants of crumbs from last year's frozen food for hiking. The peace and joy I felt while camping after so many years quickly disappeared when the reality of what was ahead of me today gripped me. The air was fresh and cool at an altitude of 6,000 feet, and when I left the tent, I was captivated by the beauty of an alpine lake surrounded by snow-capped mountains, located near my camping site. I wanted to stay longer. I would have liked to throw a fishing rod with a bait or a fly, but I knew that today was the day that I had been dreading for the last month a collision that I had to face quickly and irrevocably in order to start anew. I made myself fried eggs with sausages on a propane stove, as well as thick black coffee. As I sat and finished my meal before the six-mile trek back, I marveled at how beautiful and peaceful this moment was. I reminded myself that yes, you can find beauty and enjoyment in life if you just keep moving forward with the right mindset. I knew that I would definitely return to camping, hiking, fishing and sailing, these are just some of the hobbies that I left aside during my 23-year marriage to the love of my life. Well, I'll say this, this was the man I once completely considered the love of my life. Now I hope that at some point there will be someone again. The descent was pleasant and uneventful, and I did not meet anyone on the trail or in the parking lot at the beginning of the route. When I packed my car with gear and started driving out onto the main road, I turned on my phone after a three-day blackout. I knew that when I got to the nearest cell tower, the messages, voice messages and emails would start. When I pulled onto Tulane County Road, I heard the first signal of receiving a text message and looking down, saw that it was from my 21-year-old son Ryan. Ryan and I were not only father and son, but now we were best friends in confidence who had gone through hardships and trials. Ryan's text was short and clear. Dad, I love you and support you. Good luck today and stay positive. Somewhere someday there will be light at the end of this tunnel. His promise of support brought me to tears and helped me justify what I had to do. The next text message I read was from my daughter Krista, and it was also a promise of support and love. Dad, I would like to be with you, hug you, and tell you that everything will be fine. You were the best father we could have ever dreamed of, and you always put us first. Now you need to put yourself first, no matter what it may be, and know that Ryan and I love you and will always be there for you. Krista has always been daddy's girl, and although she was the living embodiment of my beautiful wife Linda in her youth, Krista had my desire for adventure, love of nature, and a crazy sense of humor that Linda did not have. At least in my 23 years with children whom I loved, respected, and who were the best legacy I will ever leave. At the end of what I hoped would be a happy and fulfilling life again, I stopped by on vacation to carefully review all my messages, emails, voicemails, and missed calls. There have been 10 missed calls from my wife in the last three days. The first seven or so were most likely due to her three-day banking seminar and a proposed trip to Las Vegas, and the last three seemed to have been since her return last night and again this morning. I could imagine how shocked she was when I wasn't at the airport to pick her up and when I didn't answer her calls and texts. I wasn't worried about voice messages. I deleted them all and moved on to the rest of the incoming messages. Of course, Linda has sent me about 20 messages in the last three days, and again I haven't replied to any of them. I quickly went through them, starting with her declaration of her endless love for me, and ending with several angry messages dripping insults at me for not answering her, not taking her calls, and leaving her waiting at the airport for over an hour before she finally realized I wasn't coming. The last message from her was just, what a racket, Jack, upgrade. The dynamics of our relationship had undergone a significant shift in the past month, although I don't believe she even realized how the deep love I had for her was slowly fading away. I couldn't comprehend it. Had she truly distanced herself from me during those challenging four months? Had she genuinely forgotten about me, my emotions, and the pain in my eyes that she seemed oblivious to? Had she conveniently overlooked her responsibilities as a mother, the bond our family shared and the joyous life we had built together? This was, perhaps, more disheartening than her affair. At the age of 44, Linda still possessed an enchanting beauty, and she knew how to exude charm whether it was flirting at social gatherings or playing the role of the accomplished rising star in the Trust Department of Commerce Bank. I took pride in being seen with her, 
relishing the admiring glances from men unable to tear their eyes away from her, consumed by lust. Knowing that she was mine, and that we were irrevocably intertwined, provided an immense surge of self-assurance and ego. I constantly reminded her of her beauty and desirability, yet she would dismiss my compliments by claiming she was growing old and no longer as vibrant and alluring as she once was. I tried to assure her that her radiance was only intensifying, but she brushed off my words, thinking I spoke them out of obligation as her husband and someone who loved her unconditionally. Perhaps, masked beneath her lies and deceit, she was struggling with feelings of fleeting youth and a sense of being lost. However, I was almost certain that I would never truly understand. Perhaps she would neither. For some reason, her younger boss, John Monroe, had become the new center of her universe, at least in his sexual sense, if not as the dependable best friend I had become to her. To me, we had surpassed even the boundaries of friendship, but Linda remained oblivious. John Monroe, the vice president of the trust division, was wealthy, tall, and exuded an irritating self-confidence, at least in the few encounters I had with him. But Linda believed he epitomized a great leader, or at least that was what she used to say when discussing him in her work life. However, that abruptly ceased four months ago. Looking back, I now realized it marked the beginning of her affair, the start of the downfall of our 23-year relationship. Shaking off my gloomy thoughts, I glanced at my phone with anger and deleted all her messages before moving on to my emails. My lawyer's email informed me that everything was ready for our upcoming discussions. There was also a Snapchat notification, and as I opened it, a message appeared stating that the person I was interested in had met with an accident while working. The chat vanished as soon as I closed it. The next email confirmed that my resignation from work had been accepted, and my $400,000 worth of stock options had been liquidated and transferred to my new bank account. I was financially secure for a few years, even though taxes would take their share. But I didn't care. What mattered was that I needed to leave. As I prepared to merge onto the traffic-filled road, my phone rang, and I saw Linda's name staring back at me. This was the moment, and I likened it to ripping off a band-aid. It had to be done swiftly and with conviction. I pulled over at a rest stop, switched off the car, and answered the call, trying my best to sound emotionally detached. Hey Linda, what's up? I greeted her. What's up? What the heck do you mean, what's up? Firstly, where are you? You weren't at the airport to pick me up, and you've been absent all night. You didn't leave a note, and you haven't responded to any of my calls or messages since last week. What's going on, Jack? You tell me what's up. Linda's voice dripped with confusion and concern. Linda, I didn't think it would matter to you whether or not I answered, whether or not you saw me. I assumed you'd feel relieved that I wasn't home so you could clean up and compose yourself before facing me, our kids, our friends, or your parents. Isn't that how your double life operates? I retorted sharply. What? Why would you say that, Jack? I don't understand. Linda's voice wavered with disbelief. What double life? You know I have to travel for work. And by the way, why aren't the kids responding to my calls or messages? And where is our king-sized mattress from the master bedroom? I had to sleep in the guest bedroom last night, Jack. What's happening? I feel like I'm trapped in the twilight zone, and nothing makes sense. Linda, you have willingly thrust yourself, along with our entire family, into a peculiar twilight zone of your own making, I said, as her anger and aggressive tone started to fade, replaced by a creeping sense of apprehension and her worst fears resurfacing. What? What do you mean, Jack? Linda's voice quivered with confusion. Where are you and what is happening? It doesn't matter where I am or where I am going, but I am out of town, Linda. I have been too occupied in the past week to respond to your messages and calls. I have been extremely busy trying to move on from a significant betrayal in my current life and transition into a new one." Linda hesitated. Her voice faltered upon hearing the word betrayal, but she continued to feign ignorance and shouted, "'What, Jack? Are you drunk? What are you talking about? Firstly, Linda, please tell me, how was your three-day banking conference? Did that despicable John visit you every night and morning, or just on the three nights?' I could hear her gasp and pause as I spoke, and it took her several seconds to reply. "'What are you talking about?' John who? And why would you say that? I am married to you. Yes, Linda, you are indeed married to me, and I am astonished that you still consider this a marriage. So will you at least give me the courtesy, after 23 years of marriage, to tell me the damn truth? I know you have had no respect or concern for me or our family for the past several months, but now that the lies and deceit are exposed, can you be honest about it? Linda replied, her voice trembling and soft, Jack, I don't know what you have imagined, but you are wrong. I've only loved you. 
There is nothing going on with John Monroe and me. Oh well, at least you now admit to knowing which John we are discussing. For a moment there, I thought there was more than one John. Linda, tell me honestly, did you believe you would never get caught, or did you simply not care? Were you planning to tell me that you wanted a divorce and that you loved someone else? It would have been so much easier for everyone if you had the courage to let us know before deceiving and cheating on us. Linda shouted, and I could hear the catch in her voice as she began to cry. Don't even mention the word divorce, please. Believe me, I only love you. Please come home so we can discuss this. Nothing is going on. How could you think otherwise? Apparently, Linda was convinced that I had no evidence and was bluffing, so she intended to persist with her denial. So I guess that means you never slept with Monroe in our bedroom on our now-missing king-sized mattress. No, of course not. What are you talking about, Linda? Hold the line for just one minute, will you? With that, I retrieved the photo of John Monroe engaging with Linda intimately. She seemed to be in ecstasy. This was one of many photos and videos I had captured with the button camera discreetly placed inside the clock on our dresser, which I purchased a month ago upon discovering her affair. I sent the photo to Linda and resumed the call. Linda, take a look at the photo I just sent you. Are you telling me this isn't my loving wife being fondled by her boss in our bedroom on a king-sized mattress without any restraints? I could hear her sob, oh God, no Jack, please. It was a mistake. It only happened once. It meant nothing. It was just the excitement of someone younger wanting me and making me feel youthful again. It was a one-time occurrence, and I truly never intended for it to hurt you. I am so sorry, but Jack, I cut her off by yelling into the phone, Linda, look out the back window at the middle of the backyard. Do you see the pile of burnt wood, metal, and ash? That's our Dan King-sized mattress. It symbolizes how you set our marriage ablaze, how you betrayed our family, how you humiliated me. When did you start hating me enough to inflict such pain? When did you decide that my love or our family's love no longer mattered? When did you determine that I was no longer deserving of your respect and honesty? When and why did you choose to discard us like trash in the morning? Jack, please, forgive me, please. I love you. I don't hate you. I can never hate you. I want to spend my life with you. It was an accident, a terrible mistake, and it happened only once. It was my selfishness. It had nothing to do with any deficiencies in you. Please, Jack, come home and talk to me. The kids and I have experienced enough lies and deceit. Can you please finally be honest with me? Is this why the kids won't answer my calls? Jack, did you tell them and turn them against me? How dare you? Linda, I didn't. You managed that all by yourself. Well, that and your damn buddy. This is all on you. Your selfish, self-centered attitude and your desire for someone else's has led you to this point and has destroyed our entire family, pushing us all away from you. And no, it wasn't me who informed the kids, it was the kids who told me. How pathetic is that? I could have never imagined that you would lie and cheat on me and abandon us so easily. Now at least stop lying. It wasn't just one damn time. It has been happening for at least four months, judging by how emotionally distant you have been from all of us. And the sad part is, you didn't even realize it. You ceased speaking to us, turned away from me, and stopped making love to me, except for the occasional act of mercy. You repulsed me. Jack, it meant nothing. It was merely a physical encounter, a momentary lapse in judgment during our 23-year marriage. I desired you, not John. Please believe me, Linda. Wait, Linda. I retrieved the next picture from my phone, the one capturing the moment Ryan stumbled upon his mother and Monroe engaged in their affair. Ryan discreetly approached the open door of the master bedroom, extending his phone to snap several pictures and record a video. He was so devastated that it took him two weeks to gather the courage to inform me, along with Krista, that I deserved to know. Thus, they both called me, and together we wept, feeling physically ill as we witnessed the treachery of our mother, my wife, with her superior. This event propelled me to purchase a spy camera. I also sent that photo to Linda via text. Linda, check your phone once again. This is the first time any of us discovered your involvement with your despicable boss. Although you severed all emotional ties with me three months prior to this image, I am quite certain that you two have been lovers for quite some time. Linda, your son was the first to uncover your deceit. Imagine how he must feel after witnessing such a betrayal from his own mother. Do you think this might have pushed him away, causing him to lose respect not only for you but also for Krista? How painful it was for them to confess your infidelity to me, their tears flowing as they witnessed the destruction of our marriage and family by your cheating, disgraceful behavior. Cease with the lies claiming it only occurred once 
and that it didn't last for months. Don't deny that you engaged in sexual acts with him six or seven times during your recent business trip. I will end the call if you continue this charade. No, Jack, please let me explain. No, Jack, please let me explain. I could discern Linda sobbing, picturing her crumpled on the floor as she finally comprehended the havoc her lies and betrayal had wreaked upon her family and herself. Jack, I am so sorry. Please, you must forgive me. I lost my sanity, but it is over now. It was merely a cheap thrill, feeling desired and engaging in an illicit affair. I felt young and attractive once more, but there was no love, and I never wanted to hurt you. I don't even know how I drifted away from you and the children. I am ashamed to admit that I am just now awakening and seeing myself as a character in a horror movie or nightmare. I despise myself for it because I love you and our life with the kids. Oh, dear Jack, please, please come home so that I can make amends. I need to restore our family. Linda, there is no us anymore. You cannot truly believe that you ever loved me after the pain and mental anguish you have caused. You have shown no respect for me or anyone else, consumed by your lies and deceit. I can never trust you again, and everything we had is now tainted and questionable. How long have you been engaging in illicit activities? Years or just the past four months? How many other men have you been with, Linda? Should I conduct DNA tests on our children? Don't bother responding because I won't believe anything you say. I definitely need to undergo STD testing. There is nothing left for you and me. You have hurt me more than anyone ever could. I could never have imagined that the person I loved and trusted would discard me like trash, but you did. Perhaps the kids will eventually find their way back to you, but I certainly never will. Jack, please don't say it. I will do anything. I will seek counseling. You can have affairs with other women. Please don't leave me. I have been burdened by guilt and wanted to stop, and I would have. I would always have returned to you. This was just a meaningless fling. Oh God, please forgive me. I am so sorry, Jack. Linda, spare your breath. I don't believe a single word you are saying at this point. I simply do not care about you and your lies anymore. Now, pay attention to what is transpiring. On Monday, you will be served with divorce papers at the bank. No, Jack. Please don't divorce me, please. Linda, listen to me. By now, your boss's wife has received copies of the videos and pictures I possess, showcasing your affair and the multiple times you engaged in intimate acts with him in our bedroom. As a result, it is likely that you and John Monroe will either terminate your relationship or find yourselves stuck with each other when both his wife and I abandon you. Jack, please tell me you didn't do that. He has a wife and two children. Why would you ruin them? You fail to comprehend, Linda. I'm not ruining them. You and John Monroe have destroyed them.